Hello, this is Julie. Today I'm going to show you how to do the knockout text function using Make the Cut. And we'll use some text, orchestra parents, as well as a, a violin shape that I got from online. We'll do it two different ways. One with little white space between the shape and the text and another without the white space. And you can decide which way you prefer. It's equally as simple to do and make the cut one way or the other. The parts we will be using would be the text, orchestra parents, the violin and bow shape to join together as one, and then also a shadow. So let's get started. I'll start over with a new page. And to get the font, I select the font in the Fonts drop-down menu. I'm using Team MT because it's a nice fat font and you need to choose a fat font to get the best effect. It doesn't have to be this font, but one that has that's real wide will show up your picture better. I'll click on the T and I typed in orchestra on one line, parents, and split by glyphs. The other thing that you'll notice is that I have the centering function highlighted. And then I'll accept. Now on Make the Cut we have real quick and easy ways to make these letters closer together. We want the letters to be as close as they can get with minimal space between them. I do want to leave a little space to keep the distinction of the letters separate, but I want to be able to move them closer. And make the cut if we hold the control key, we can adjust the spacing. So I'm moving the bottom arrow up just so it the letters are almost touching the top row. Still holding the control key, I'm going to do the side here till most of the letters are spaced the way I want. You notice that the spacing adjusts as you move left or right with that arrow. Now some of the letters overlap more or less because of of the way the font was made. So I get them mostly the way I want them and then I will adjust individually. And you'll notice that each of the letters came on the mat individually because I had them split by glyphs. Now I'm just going to use my arrow keys to move them a little bit closer, make those fine adjustments. Now it would probably look fine if I didn't do this, but I really like to see as much of my shape as I can. So I want the letters to be as close as possible without touching. This A is a little bit too close, so I'll move it a little bit to the right. And I could probably move this one. You notice the insides of the letters move with the outsides automatically. Sometimes it's just a single tap with the arrow keys to get the letters close. Now that I've got them spaced the way I want them, I'm going to select them all and join them so they're all one unit. Also, I'm going to line them up with uh, one of the grid lines because I want them to be about four inches tall. So I'll just drag them down to the, the grid line that's closest to where I want them to be. And now I'm going to grab the violin, come over here, and to get this I pixel traced it from an image. But I'm just going to click on the violin and do Control C to copy, then bring it over here to this new page. I'd like the violin to go on its own layer, so I'm going to click on the plus icon, larger up plus icon that's green in the lower right corner of the screen and control shift V paste the violin on the page. Now I want to line that violin up where I want it to be on the design. I kind of pay attention to that the F holes to try to 
get a large amount of the F-hole design and over a black pieces you can adjust it however you want and you can adjust the sizing as well. So you notice I have the violin on one layer and the text on another. Now the first way I'll do this is simply select all and control shift and click duplicates it. With the duplicate selected I'm going to send it to its own layer so you can see it at the top on the top layer. So my first operation is to click on the violin, hold a shift, and click on one set of letters. I'm going to go to Boolean Join, which is just a fancy name for advanced welding options. And on this one, I'm going to do an intersect. Once, once I've got that, I'll, I clicked on Apply, and I'm going to uh, hide that layer so that now we see the other set of letters and the violin. So I'm going to select them all. I can just drag around them since I have the other parts hidden. And again, I'm going to go to Boolean Join, but this time I'm going to do B to A Difference, which is a Subtract Weld option, and Apply. I don't think that worked, so I'm going to undo it. Click on the violin, click on the text, go to Boolean Join, and B to A difference. There we go, and apply. Now we notice that this turned brown, I, I really do want it to be black, so on that layer I'm going to change it to black and I'm going to show the first layer that we did and now we have our completed project if we want to do it without having a shadow. Now I'm going to show you how to do this same thing using a shadow layer. So I'll open a new page here, blank, and this time I'll just go to my parts. I like when I'm doing welding operations to just save a version of the file with the parts so that I can play with it in several different ways. Now on this one I'll select the violin and the text and copy control C and go to my new page. And this time control shift V pastes everything and I'll show you how I got my shadow. When I click the text you notice that it's all joined together so I'll send that to its own layer and on the violin now you see that it's on its own layer as well. I'm going to click on the violin and click on the shadow icon which is the fourth icon from the right at the bottom of the screen and you can make your shadow as thick as you want Maybe this time I'll make mine about a 0 0.03. I just want a very narrow shadow. And you can see in this uh, preview window, the dark portions are the shadow. And I, I've got it blacked out so that it's not really going to show the F-hole. I don't really need that to be. You can either do it blacked out or not. And accept. Now the shadow layer is on its own layer at the bottom. If I hide it, you'll see that there's a faint view of the shadow showing. And now it's on. You see the black outline. It's, it's just a very slight shadow. Now what I want to do is, again, duplicate the text as we need two copies in order to do two different welding operations or boolean joins. So I'm going to again just hold control shift and click and that gives me the second copy as you see here. I'll undo that so that they're perfectly stacked. And I'm going to send one of them to its own layer so that we can watch and see how this weld operation is happening. So what I'm going to do first is select the original violin on the 
using its icon on the and I think I better do them all. I'll, I'll select the violin and move it over the text and get it positioned where I want it to be. Once it's where I want it to be, then I'm going to select just the violin and the text, one of the text layers go to boolean join and we'll do the intersection. I'll send that, I'll apply it first and then send that to its own layer. It goes to the top of the layers palette and I'll change the color to brown and I'm going to hide that layer. So now that we can we can see what's going to happen with the next one. Now then the next one we have the the violin shadow and the text. I'm holding the shift key and I'm just clicking on the thumbnails on the right hand side to select both. Again I'm going to go to boolean join and this time I'm going to select A to B difference. It might be B to A. You look at it and you can see the difference. Well the one I want is this one and then apply. Now if I show the first layer I have the effect that I want with a little space between the text and the shape and that gives me a little bit of wiggle room when I'm layering two different colors of vinyl. So it's nice and easy to do that in Make the Cut. I hope this was helpful for you. Thanks for watching.